Prime Minister Justin Trudeau made a surprise visit to a mining conference in Toronto, saying he plans to work with citizens, industries and Indigenous groups to help Canada reach its goal of zero carbon emissions by 2050. We want to work with you to grow Canada's prosperity by taking carbon pollution out of our environment and out of our economy. From zero carbon emissions to elections to COVID-19 for all the headlines this week in politics, we are joined by the Globe and Mail's Laura Stone. Good to have you here. Good morning. Uh, let's start with uh, that press conference that we just saw. Critics say that as long as Canada is relying so heavily on its oil and gas industry, this goal of zero emissions by 2050 is nearly impossible. So what alternatives does Trudeau have? Well, I think we saw the result of this when the tech uh, resources pulled out of Canada recently. And uh, the message to, to the government, the federal government, and also Alberta was, you guys need to get your house in order and figure out exactly where you stand on the economy and the environment. So Prime Minister Trudeau's message yesterday to industry was, this transformation is inevitable. It's going to be difficult, but we want to work with you to make it as painless as possible. I think I've talk, I talked to some mining groups that were in the room, um, and they they did uh, they 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 did support uh, Prime Minister Trudeau's message on this. Um, there's going to be some tax cuts for their businesses as well. What was most interesting, I think, about this speech is that uh, the Prime Minister compared this to the NAFTA talks on mm. free trade. He said, you know, at the time that was a really heated debate. People were talking about should we have free trade? How should we go about it? Now it's just a common accepted thing in Canadian society. And he says that is where this environment climate change debate is going. All right, Conservative leadership candidates Peter McKay, Erin O'Toole, and Marilyn Gladue say that if they're chosen as party leader, all three of them have said this, they're the front runners, they're going to push to unseat the Liberal minority government, which means we could be handing back to the polls. NDP saying, hey, we're not going to support this. So what will it take for the, to get the Conservatives to get us back to the polls? Oh, the joys of leadership contests, Anne-Marie. Uh, well, the Conservatives would need support from either the NDP or the Bloc Québécois on this measure. That looks highly unlikely, but I think you need to put this into context of why these leadership contenders are saying this. They're not speaking to the general public right now. They're speaking to Conservative members, many of them who are uh, very upset with, with the Liberal government, who, you know, they're very worked up about how how the Trudeau government handled the blockades, for instance. Um, so, you know, this is a partisan crowd. So that is why these um, conservative politicians are saying this. This would be a very difficult thing to achieve without support of other parties in the Commons, and that doesn't look likely right now. There's also the matter of, you know, whether the Canadian public wants another election one year after uh, they just went through a very divisive election. Probably not a, a popular measure among the average person. Uh, really quickly, we're hearing about travel advisories today. What else is in the government's pandemic plan? I mean, we saw the UK has just started to roll theirs out as of this morning. Is there anything in there about closing schools or businesses? The government's been asked about this, certainly in Ontario, several times. They say they're not prepared to go that far, but they are preparing a plan. So, you know, depending on whether this, uh, this virus now begins to be spread locally, which is what um, health officials are now looking for. It's not just people who have come back from certain affected right. countries, such as China, Iran, or Egypt. It's whether now this is going to be spread amongst the Canadian public. So um, hospitals are now going to begin testing people who have not just traveled to those countries. So I think we're starting... So symptomatic, but haven't traveled to any of the countries on the list. Absolutely. Okay. pilot projects to see you know whether this is beginning to spread but that is the concern among among uh, officials that we might not know how far this has gone really quickly uh, behind the scenes from your perspective we've watched other world leaders who've stopped shaking hands at, at various conferences have you noticed this in our Canadian politicians at all well Prime Minister Trudeau did come out in, in to that mining conference yesterday he took the stage as far as I could see he didn't shake anyone's hand in the room he was kind of in and out he did address the coronavirus um, epidemic uh, or, or potential pandemic and, mm -hmm. and say that he's, he's working on this. But that is something to watch because we'll see, you know, whether, whether world leaders do want to travel to, to such affected areas now. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.